the body. I'm Blythe Stevens of A Blythe Coach, dance education and coaching to move through life with balance, grace, and power. Today, I'm here to share with you some truths about turnout in classical ballet technique. And I brought along this old fashioned mixer or blender because it creates a really nice visual for what we're talking about anatomically. So we're generating force from the top of two points which rotate then in opposing directions from one another, either inward towards the center from the outside or outward from away from the center to the back and outside. These are known as inside or in ballet terminology, on de don direction, or outside, on de or, or away from the center. So this is a great visual for classical ballet technique. And because like one of my mentors, Betsy Fisher, Fisher says, I'm not the guru of the dance, I am also going to share a little bit of a literature review so we can hear what some of the experts have to say about turnout or external rotation from the hips in classical ballet technique. Ballet Pedagogy, The Art of Teaching by Rory Foster discusses turnout in this way. In fact, he calls it the all-important turnout. Quote, the movement vocabulary of classical ballet is designed to be performed utilizing the outward rotation of the legs or turnout. While certain steps can be accomplished with little turnout, more complex steps cannot. Technically and aesthetically, classical steps will not have the correct and desired look unless they are done with an adequate degree of rotation. Assuming there is no skeletal impediment to one's turnout, developing as much flexibility in this part of the anatomy of the young dancer is as important as developing strength in the legs, feet, and torso. Ligaments bind bone to bone at the joints. The insertion of the femur into the pelvis is a ball and socket joint that is held by these strong ligaments. Unlike muscles, ligaments are tough and do not stretch easily. Care must be taken to gradually stretch them incrementally, not forcibly. Unlike muscle tissue ligaments that are overly stretched will not return to their original length. Therefore, it is important to simultaneously build supporting strength in the muscles, principally the rotators, that stabilize and have a direct relationship to the hip joint. Building strength and flexibility together should be accomplished through a balanced approach. Turnout originates in the hip joint, the angle of the upper thigh, femoral neck, and the directional opening of the hip socket, acetabulum, play a major role in determining the allowable degree of turnout. Some students ha do have a skeletal structure that allows little or no rotation, and no amount of stretching will significantly alter their ability for turnout working the turnout. Quote, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Dancers know this experientially better than most. In order to move, force must be exerted and met by equal resistance. This is constantly in play in all upright, stationary, and locomotor movement, the pushing force against the resisting floor. Likewise, working the turnout must be done using oppositional force. Both legs simultaneously rotate outward in opposition to each other. Concentrating on the turnout in the working leg without engaging turnout in the supporting leg, emphasizing the top of the inner thigh, will not increase strengthen or stabilize the overall turnout. Alignment of turnout legs, thigh, knee, lower leg, foot must be maintained in order to avoid injury, particularly to the knee. Beautiful. I love this photo also from ballet pedagogy where it shows the spiraling action starting from the upper part of the thigh and then rotating, spiraling down and away through the entire leg certainly not starting with the foot. 
In Basic Principles of Classical Ballet, Russian Ballet Technique, Agrippina Vaganova describes the origins of turnout thusly. The conception of en dehors also defines the turned out position of the leg accepted in classical ballet. People who know nothing about classical ballet tell all sorts of the false and nonsensical things about the turnout. Therefore, I shall explain the origin of the turnout in detail, borrowing some terms from anatomy. The turnout is an anatomical necessity for every classical dance, which embraces the entire volume of movements conceivable for the legs and which cannot be accomplished without turnout. The turnout is the faculty of turning out the knee to a much greater extent that is made possible by nature. The foot turns outward together with the knee. This is a consequence and to a certain degree an auxiliary movement. The aim of the turnout is to turn out the upper part of the leg, the hip bone. The result of the turnout is freedom of movement in the hip joint. The leg can more easily be extended and crossed with the other leg. In the normal position, the movements of the legs are greatly limited by the build of the joint between the pelvis and the hip. As the leg is extended, the hip neck meets the brim of the acetabulum and further movement is impossible. But if the leg is turned out on day or, the big trochanter recedes and the brim of the acetabulum meets the flat side flat surface of the hip neck. This allows the leg to be extended to an angle of 90 degrees or even 135 degrees. The turnout enlarges the field of action of the leg to the proportions of the obtuse cone, which the leg describes in Grand Rond de Jambe. This is the importance of training the legs of a classical dancer in strict en dehors. It is not an aesthetic conception, but a professional necessity. The dancer without a turnout is limited in her movements, while a classical dancer possessing a turnout is in command of all conceivable richness of dance movements of the legs. The Cicchetti Method of Classical Ballet Theory and Technique by Cyril W. Beaumont and Stanislas Biakowski describes the study of the legs and the turnout as follows. Quote, in the management of the legs, your chief concern must be to acquire a facility in turning them well outward. Therefore, your hips must be free, so your thighs move with ease and your knees turn well outwards. By this means, the openings of your legs are rendered easy and graceful. In the Ballet Companion by Eliza Gaynor Minden, she has a great section on turnout. Quote, ballet dancers have been turned out since the time of ballet de cour, well before the days of ear high developes. Turnout enables the dancers to move easily from side to side, to jump and to pose without ever turning away from the audience. Dancers have always believed that it looks better that way. Back in the days of court dancing, women wore huge concealing skirts, but men showed their well-formed legs in elegant silk hose. Turnout displayed those handsome calf muscles to better advantage. Turnout is what enables a dancer to raise the leg elegantly to the side without displacing the hips or torso. Try to do this without turning out and you'll find that when your leg reaches waist height, your hips become uneven and your alignment is lost. Turnout facilitates everything you do in ballet and bachelet would be quite impossible without it. Absent good turnout, the heels get in the way of the beats. Proper turnout starts deep in the hip socket and continues all the way down the leg to the knee, ankle, and foot. Led by the inner thigh muscles, the entire thigh rotates. A few lucky dancers have a full 180 degree turnout, but it's impossible to dance well with less. Work fully with what you have. Your imperfect turnout properly used looks better than perfect turnout on someone who can't control it. You can and should stretch gently to help open up your hips. Turnout should be carefully coaxed, never forced. Working in incorrect, overly turned out positions can cause injury. Your knees are aligned directly over your toes at all times. Position your feet accordingly and do not allow your knees to roll inward, especially when you plie. A few more tips. 
quote, turn out both legs equally at all times. Don't let the pelvis tuck under in an effort to increase turnout. It's a rotation within the hips, not a clenching of the buttocks. Do not force your feet into a perfect toe, heel, heel to toe fifth position if it means the slightest compromise of straight knees or a properly placed pelvis. Never force your feet to turn out in a plie and then try to straighten your legs. It, should, it could injure your knees. I have personal experience with injury to my knees, which certainly is connected in some way to the way my muscles have developed over the years in classical ballet. So I'm especially sensitive to the correct technique and safety and prolong prolonging our career as dancers as long as possible. So in my class, please never force your turnout, bending the knees and plie, cranking the feet out and then trying to create a stretched knee from there. We'll always begin the rotation at the top of the thigh. Work on flexibility and strength in a balanced way and also be very mindful of alignment in all movements. So it's important to figure out and understand what your normal degree, what your natural degree of rotation is. And as a dancer, to always be intentionally choosing how we are placing the weight and aligning the body. So is it on two feet or one in a parallel or neutral position or rotated out? from the hip joint spiraling through the leg. So if we're gonna create that rotation from the top of the hip joint and spiral through the leg, let's evaluate how our physical anatomy is going to affect the degree of rotation we can produce when we're standing up and moving through different positions. So to do this, we'll lie flat on the back. Start out with the knees together, bent, and then just let the knees and thighs fall apart in opposite directions. So allow gravity to support the stretch. And this is a wonderful passive stretch just to relax it. In yoga, this is a reclining Vata Konasana position and provides a relaxation and an opening. And you can also support this um, as a relaxation position by placing a block or something behind this. But right now we're just laying here to peek at the degree to which our thigh bone or our femur naturally falls open. We might be able to increase this a bit through stretching, especially while we're young, but as adults, it will be very, very gradual and subtle, a small amount gained. It's still worth working for, but we need to know where we're starting at, which is right here. So maybe your knees are much closer together. That's totally fine. We're just getting a sense of what's going on here in the hip joint. And my first position or any externally rotated position will not be wider. The angle of the feet will not be wider or greater than what I have here in a passive position. In fact, it might be smaller because I will need to use my muscles and my strength in order to support that rotation once I'm standing up. It will no longer be passive. And there's lots of fun things we can do down here to support the strength and the flexibility in the hips. I'll be sharing more of those in upcoming videos. So having taken note of what degree of rotation we naturally have, we will stretch and build strength using bar exercises and other supportive exercises. And that will be a nice little reality check just to see, okay, my first position is not gonna be at a larger angle than it was on the floor. It may in fact be smaller and that's okay. But I'll be rotating both sides equally away from another, keeping the angle a matching one between the hip and thigh joint, the knee, and the, the foot, so or the middle of the foot. So often we'll cue this as the knee opening over the middle toe, no matter what degree of bend it has. So that's how you can get to know your own degree of rotation for turnout. Then here's how we'll use it. 
So try for yourself in a parallel position, lifting up one leg to the side as far as you can, and you'll notice at some point you will reach a limit. This is where of the head of the greater trochanter is running up against the acetabulum or the bone of the pelvis. So we're gonna tuck that head of the femur, the greater trochanter, back and allow the leg a greater range of motion to the side. Of course, this will also develop on our personal flexibility and strength in the hips, but it might look something like this. Here's my parallel position. At some point, I reach a limit and I have to tilt my upper body or my torso over to the side. So that greatly impacts my alignment and my placement through the spine <laughs> in order to get the leg any higher. I'm rotating my whole pelvis over the top of my standing leg. Or with rotation, I can lift that leg either straight or bent much higher much, much, much higher in the air. Not warm, so won't go as high as I might see when I'm well warmed up, but I can get a much greater angle here without disturbing the levelness of my pelvis than I can in my parallel shape. So try it for yourself, see how that works. And then while we're working at the bar, make sure that you are working equally on the standing leg or supporting leg and also the working leg or the gesturing leg as well. Thank you so much for joining me for Truths About Turnout. I will have follow-up videos on specific training and stretches to help improve your own turnout as well as ballet technique exercises at the bar to help strengthen and stretch as well as recommendations to other videos I've created, such as Rondesham Ater and turning techniques, which will also be applicable to this topic. Check out the description box down below for more information. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and click that little notification bell to be notified of my next offerings. Give me a comment, let me know what was helpful and what you'd like to see more of, and I will see you next time. Thanks so much for joining me. Again, for more information, you can always feel free to visit my website, ablythecoach.com. That's A-B-L-Y-T-H-E-C-O-A-C-H.com.